In this problem, our goal is to find the force, the reaction force at the pin A, called P. And the whole process of this video is to solve for tension forces given in arbitrary directions in three-dimensional space. So most of this video is going to be tedious, so I'm going to fast forward some of these parts because they are redundant. So to get started, we're going to start with the free body diagram of the point A. So if you have the point A right here, we have a tension force going in this direction. So this will be TAB. And then there'll be a tension force going in this direction, which is TAC. And then some tension force going in this direction, TAD. And then finally, we have the reaction force called P, going directly upward in the Y direction. And our axes are defined in this orientation, which is a right-hand coordinate system, but just switched and flipped and oriented in a different way. So to get started, we have to define position vectors to find unit vectors and then to find attention vectors and solve a system of linear equations. So we're going to define this first position vector, which goes from O to B. So that is R1. And then we're going to define this position vector, R2, and then this position vector, R3. And all these platforms lie on the x, z plane. And then our last position vector would be all the way up to A from O. So this would be R4. So to define these position vectors, we're going to start with R1. Um, R1 has a negative x component, which is 20 feet, so that would be negative 20i. And then j would be in the y direction, which is 0, so that would be 0. And then for the z direction, we have a positive 25 feet, so it would be plus 25k. R2, that would be positive 60 feet, so that would be positive 60i, plus 18k. R3 would be negative or positive, wait, no, negative 20 feet, so negative 20i, plus or minus 74k. So those are the position vectors that lie on the xz plane. And now we can define our last one, which is R4, which is the simplest of the group. So this will be positive 100j. So 100j. So our next goal is to find a directional vector so we can use that to find our unit vectors. Um, so we, based on our free body diagram, we want the directional vector to point in this direction, going downward. So we want to define them in this fashion. So we want the direction vector to go that way. Sorry about that. Going that way. And what we're going to do is... Um, subtract these unit or these position vectors to get this directional vector. So we're going to call this one R A B and then I'm going to call this one R A C and then R A D. So to define these, all we have to do is do R A B is equal to R1 minus R4. RAC is R2 minus R4. And then RAD is R3 minus R4. Since the process we're going to do in the next step is going to be repeated for each uh, directional vector, I'm just going to do one of them and then fast forward the rest. So I'm going to do R, A, C first, and then I'll let you guys do the rest while I fast forward the video. So we have to find the unit vector R, A, C, or U, A, C by doing R2 minus R4, so that would be 60 that would be 60i minus 100j plus 18k. And then we divide by the magnitude of that. So it would be 60 squared plus 100 squared 
plus 18 squared, all that square rooted. So what I get when plugging this stuff in the calculator, it doesn't give us a nice number, so I kept it as fractions. We get this unit vector for AC. So we could define tension AC, the vector force, or the force vector, um, by multiplying the magnitude of AC by the unit vector AC. So what we could do, we know the tension in cable AC, which is 590 pounds, so we could solve that quite simply by multiplying this unit vector by 590 pounds. So this is what I get, we, get, we actually get nice numbers, so this is the tension force in the cable AC. Now I'm going to repeat this process for the other tensions in the cable. So I solved for all the unit vectors for each tension cable, and then I multiplied by their magnitudes. But since we don't know the actual magnitudes of each cable, I kept it, I kept it as a variable so we could solve it later in a system of linear equations. So now that we have all the unit vectors and all the tension force vectors defined, now we have to just apply the concept of equilibrium. So what that, e what that means is that the vector sum of the forces of the system is equal to zero. So we simply set f of x equal to zero, f of y, f of z equal to zero, and we could solve for the system of equations. So we're going to start off with f of x. So f of x, we have 300 minus negative 4, or actually 4 over 21 TAB minus 2126 TAD equals zero. If you wonder wondering why I'm using these numbers, all I'm doing is simply taking this uh, vector, this arbitrary vector, and multiplying by this magnitude, which we kept as a variable, to its unit vector, and then plugging it into this equation. So, and then I'm just adding up each x component for each vector that we solved for. So we can actually simplify this equation to be 421 TAB plus 2126 TAD, which equals 300. So this is our the first equation. Now I'm going to repeat the process and I'm going to fast forward the video for the other components of this system. So I found all the equations are in our system of equations, and all we have to do is solve for the variables. So the, the variables that we have are TAB, TAD, and P, and we're trying to find P. So we have three unknowns and three equations, so we should be able to solve this by using traditional methods of solving a system of linear equations. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up the system of equations in a matrix method so I can plug this in into MATLAB and solve the problem that way. It's just more convenient for me. You can solve it however you want, but this is the way I'm going to do it to save myself some time. If you guys want to know how to write this system of equations in vector note or matrix notation, then feel free to watch what I'm about to do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the co I'm going to take the coefficients of each variable in each equation and put it into a three by three matrix. So what we're gonna start off with is by this first equation. So we have the coefficient of TAB, which is four over 21, then the coefficient of TAD, which is 20 over 126. And then there's actually a coefficient of P here, but since there's no P variable, then the coefficient is actually zero. So we could say that's zero, and then repeat the process for two. So it'd be negative 20 over 21, minus 100, 126, and make sure you're consistent with your labeling. So this would be all TAB coefficients, this will be all TAD coefficients, and these will all be coefficients for P. So this will be one for this equation, 
and then for the last one is going to be 5 over 21 minus 74 over 126 and then 0 so this is our coefficient matrix and then we're going to define our vector matrix or a variable matrix so we're going to have the first variable which is TAB and then our second variable TAD this should be a D and then we have another variable which is P so by matrix multiplication if you, you how you multiply this out would be TAB goes here TAD goes here P goes here and then repeat that for each row and then you get a system of equations so then we set this equal to the right hand of each uh, equation so it'll be 300 500 and then negative 90 and if you then you can plug this into MATLAB and solve for the system of equations after plugging it into MATLAB this matrix system of equations I got that P the reaction force is equal to 2,000 pounds so to quickly recap of what we did what we, we defined uh, a free body diagram at the point A and then we realized that the tension forces are pointing in arbitrary directions in three-dimensional space so to define those tension forces we had to define position vectors R1, R2, R3, and R4 and then from there we had to find directional vectors that point in the same direction as the tension forces that we drew in the free body diagram and then from there we defined unit vectors and used those unit, vector, unit vectors to find the force vectors of each tension in each cable and then from there we used the idea of equilibrium and added up each component of the tension forces and uh, the the reaction force P to find the force P. So that is the quick recap of what we just did.